match of the round between the Palmerston Magpies and also the Tiwi Bombers as they make their way onto the ground. And they're leading the way as well on the scoreboard. 10 5 65 to 5 7 37. Leading goal kickers on the ground include Darren Ewing with four next to his name, whilst uh, Tip and Woody Epron has kicked also four. So it's, uh, it's an intriguing battle between the two uh, big forwards. But also it's been highlighted by uh, some of the sublime skills of the Tiwi Bombers outfit are really dominating, especially when they get into a bit of space and uh, using the ball beautifully. Although we have had a fair bit of rain at half time, not tumbling down as much, but uh, definitely uh, making conditions a little bit more difficult for uh, everyone concerned out there on the field. As the crowd starts to slowly make its way off the ground. Other winners on the weekend so far have been St Mary's and they uh, did it quite well in the end, although they were challenged by the Southern District's Crocs. Two sides that will be looking to participate in uh, this year's final series and uh, interesting enough the Wanderers knocked off the Waratahs as well a side that was undefeated a couple of weeks ago the Waratahs outfit losing the last two games on the trot so they'll be eager to get back on the winning list next week big game tomorrow as well and it looks like it could be one-sided as well as Nycliffe who are undefeated will be taking on a side that hasn't won a game this season in the Darwin Buffaloes that will be played at Nycliffe Oval at 4pm at tomorrow afternoon. You can follow us on the website of course aflntv.com.au check it out and also on Facebook AFLNT become a friend of AFLNT via that and also you can have your say on today's progress whether you're watching in Adelaide, Perth, anywhere around Australia or even overseas as well. Great to have your company this evening as players move into their position. And just on that one, Edo, we've got Marty Hocking down in Adelaide. A big shout nuts. out to you. Marty Hocking going nuts on the Facebook page, Marty. Just keep them coming, mate. I'm glad you enjoyed that advert. We enjoyed assisting Rad to make it. So, um, yeah, really well done and uh, good to have you tuning in each week. And of course on aflnt.com.au you can catch up with the boot as well each and every week with a good wrap up of what's been going on in the NTFL. As play gets underway and Palmerston look to get a centre clearance through Pratt as a worm burning kick gets smothered off the boot. Going in hard there is uh, Nabi Kelly. Also there with him is the likes of Heenan. Gets it forward. Ross Tungatalam buys himself some time and chipping in front of Tip and Woody was Audio as he switches play, finds Dignan. So Dignan got nothing really to kick to, so he switches play yet again, and uh, Tip and Woody knocks it out of the hands of Pratt, and it's seen over the boundary line. So a bit of pressure, forward line pressure there by the Tiwi Bombers, causing some pain for the Palmerston Magpies. The rain just came down a little bit at half time, so it's just going to be slippery and wet for the guys to maintain their feet. So it's going to be interesting to see how they both settle into the second half. So ball over the boundary line yet again to be thrown in. So the Bombers kicking towards the McMillan's Road end of the ground and Palmerston heading towards the airport end of the ground. Tap down that time there by the number 13 in Swa, heading towards the boundary line again. Going to have to be skillful to use the ball well in this third quarter as it's greasy conditions. Cunningham's there as well. Plenty of players around this scrimmage. And a free kick going the way of the Tiwi Bombers to the likes of Sampson Mungatopi. So Mungatopi goes uh, about 25 metres backwards. They switch it back inboard and find the lead-up player Inabi Kelly. So Kelly. Plays on quickly a high up and under kick. Cameron Cloak's there to mop things up. He drops what he probably should have taken, but the greasy conditions say otherwise. Tunga Talam holding the ball. Oh, could be in trouble here, Palmerston, but they get the kick away. 
Good work there by the number 22 in Guy, wearing a different number tonight. Usually wears number seven on his back. But due to the seatbelt numbers, is Darren Ewing. Can he get the ball to swing on back? It skids across the front of goal. Not out of play as yet. Kavanagh in pursuit. Tries to keep it alive. But he's pursued as well. And it's seen over the boundary line, deep in their forward pocket. Prior to that forward press from uh, Palmerston uh, into their forward line, uh, it, they were, there was probably only two players inside the, the 450 of Palmerston. Every other player was up in uh, in the Tewi Bombers forward half. So Palmerston really looking to clog up the Tewi forward line and then run out with gusto. A big punch away there by Tewi as they try to look uh, to get it out through Barden. Also in that area is Heenan. Chipped across and good work there by Jason Cloak. Switches on to his right, but it's chipped off yet again. That time by Scanlon. And away they go. To Mungatopi. Plenty of space on the outer side here for the Tiwi Bombers to build up a forward thrust. Hits the ground running. He watched Jerry Cunningham work. He's a magic. Here he goes. Keeps the ball alive. Creates some space for himself. Switches it across his body and uh, not happy with the way that that went down. And that's out of bounds on the full by hitting the post and audio will take the kick in for Palmerston as they go along the outer side finds Cook good lead up play Cloak into the middle of the ground had to be precise with the kick Jeez, mucking that one up back into the forward line for the Tiwi Bombers Tunga Talam and Cunningham trying to work their way through a Palmerston wall. Also there is Cantilla. Here comes Cunningham. Jeez, he sort of dodged the ball that time. He's playing a game of dodgeball with Ben Stiller. And a good mark taken there by Guy. Uh, just Cunningham made the wrong decision there. Just waiting for the ball. And just needs to be strong there. Take the ball, take the tackle, take the hit. Um, it's, the worst thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a ball up. So I think he just needs to be a bit stronger over the ball in that instance. So poor Timmy kicks it inboard. Jake Dignan there as well. Working really hard to earn the ball there is uh, Pupunga Mary. Good work there by the Mungatopi boys. Collected after he got the ball away there was Samson Mungatopi. And there will be a free kick. And it's going the way of Roy Cantilla. So Cantilla, now 55 metres out from goal when he takes this kick and there's plenty of magpies to block any avenue for a pass so expect him to go long he switches play out wide has to be a good kick out in that direction is a Tipapura Mantamiri Cook's here for Palmerston Kelly's been everywhere in this third quarter for Tiwi Heads in board, but nothing but magpies there. And Smith will mop things up. So they switch play. And good run here by the magpies to get it out of defence. Looking for touch this time, and it skids along. That's the bonus about these greasy conditions. That time there by Sheldon Kelly to make an extra 10 metres on that one. It's all well and good pressing up the ground, Neto, but it's no good if you're going to press up and not run back forward. Uh, Palmerson just had no options there, and... I think it was Cook, was it, or, or Sheldon Nelly. Uh, just didn't have anybody to go to, so just had to slam it on the boot. So good work there. A bit of feeling in the game still as the kick is away there by Hamlin. Here comes Ewing. Likes to crumb the ball, does Ewing, and he ends up with it. Beautiful hand pass to Pratt, and he hits the target as well, and that's a fine mark in these greasy conditions. And it is the number 22 in Guy. As he looks to set things up and a good lead up there as well. Cook. And Palmerston looks to get their first on the board after half time. And geez, they desperately need this one to stay in touch as the buffer has just been increasing ever so much. It's a 28 point lead to the Tiwi Bombers. Can they shed a bit of that away? No, they can't. They've been doing it one point at a time. So it's 5-8-38 to 10-5-65. Uh, a 27-point lead to the Tiwi Bombers. Now 
crucial miss there, and I think uh, Palmerston really need the first goal to one to get their confidence back up, but two just to get back in this game. Uh, I think it's going to be crucial for them, um, especially to restart their season, uh, but also to uh, just to get back in this game as a nice sprawl there by uh, Sheldon Nelly. So a good spoil there and uh, another chance for Palmerston. Tap down there by Cloak. Pratt's there as well. Good work there by Nabi Kelly going in hard and uh, I think he might it might just be a stinger and I think he knows that as well, Kelly. Yeah, those ones are nasty. You know, right on the point of the shoulder it got him and uh, yeah, I think he's really feeling that. It could be a collarbone but also it could be a badly done AC joint. Kelly kicks it forward. Nothing but Wee Bombers there to uh, stop the patrol. Plenty of magpies starting to come in and help out as they chip it along the wing, but they don't find the target, and good work there by Kelly. So Kelly chips it inboard. Can it hit a target? Big, booming, blazing away kick. That time there by the likes of Hunter. And it is over the boundary line off the hands of Ewing. And just get the sense that Palmerston, this is their chance, this is their moment to really start to influence the scoreboard. Still within striking distance, so the game isn't out of reach. Just need to win a couple of clearances. Great work there, and that is holding the ball. And a bit of feeling and little in the thick of it yet again. <laughs> Jeez, he loves to have a chat. I don't know whether he likes to find trouble or he just finds <laughs> trouble. But, uh, yeah, Pierce Little, great run down and chase. Um, and, uh, yeah, lining up with the, the rain starting to come down a little bit harder now. But, again, like we've said uh, in the first 10 minutes of this game, it's... It's this first goal that's going to be crucial for this for the Palms and Magpies to get back into this game. So Little, the captain of the Magpies, needs a captain's goal to keep his side in it and also to keep his side in touch with the final five. As Little comes in, good looking kick, a little bit wobbly in the end. Plenty of players putting their hand up for a mark here as they get the kick away through Barden. But it only goes to Jason Cloak. Here's his chances. He chips it into Cook. Off hands. Munkara's there as well. Mungatopi. That time Donald. Good work there by Liston. Munkara again. Hard running from him from defence. Finds Scanlon. So Scanlon. Finds a loose player for Tiwi as they try to set up Jerry Cunningham. And they do so with ease. And this is the scary thing for Palmerston. They've worked so hard over the last five minutes to get a, a major on the board. And it seems as though Tiwi, with an effortless move forward, could get their first goal of the quarter through Jerry Cunningham. Yeah, as you say, effortless movement of the Tiwi Bombers up the ground. And uh, they do it with ease and with, with skill and precision. And, yeah, it is devastating. It's morale crushing. That's what it is. When you work so hard to get a score on the board, and whether you kick a goal or whether you don't, uh, the ease of which the two bombers could about to kick a goal could really just devastate the Palmerston Magpies. And Jerry does not make a mistake with that one as he gets another one on the board. He's got a couple tonight as well. And uh, well, this buffer just gets bigger and bigger. So it is 11 5 71 to 5 8 38. And the Tiwi Bombers in all control of this match. Palmerston desperate for a couple of goals in this third quarter and the conditions are really starting to take a toll on it just uh, with the, the hand to foot especially in front of goal for the Magpies Ball back in the middle. And away we go again. Wilson doing the ruck work for Palmerston. He wins the tap out. Palapamini roves the ball there for Tiwi as they get a quick kick away. Heading in the Smith direction. He'll mark that unopposed. It's Mungatopi. Just trailed him that time to the ball. Smith. Nice lace out kick, but he kicks it to Mungatopi who drops it. That time it was Donald. He goes in hard again. Players jump all over the ball and will be thrown up. Roughly 60 metres out from the Palmerston attacking goal. Ball thrown up. Wilson. 
Big punch away there by Jason Cloak, third man up that time. Cameron Cloak going in hard as well. Diving on the top of it there is Dignan trying to get it out. Sheldon Kelly's there as well. But here come the Tiwi Bombers. Good work there by Purpanga Mary. Over the top there by Kelly. Punched away. Geez, they keep it inside. Good work there by Hunter. Hand passes out. Wrapped up. Jason Cloak gets a quick kick away, but it's to the ascendancy of the Tiwi Bombers. And they're off through Heenan. Had to be precise with it. Good work there by Chancic to try and cut it off. But they're inside the forward 50. Ephraim to them Woody. Hand pass Willie. No, he goes on with it himself. An epic moment of the day for the Tiwi Bombers. Yeah, from Tippermoody, uh, really comes into his own there when the ball hits the ground. He didn't quite grab the mark, and Sammy Audio, probably a little bit too flashy there, probably could have gone with two hands instead of one. Uh, the strength uh, and, again, skill of Ephraim Tippermoody is agility, again, for a big man his size. Uh, he's, he's bigger than Darren Ewing uh, in girth, but, um, yeah, I tell you what, he's got some agility to match that, so... I was going really to say, well Darren Ewing's looking absolutely supreme at the moment. He's looking quite slender. Very slender. He's very barrel-chested, but he, yeah, like you say, looking very slender coming off a, f a full season with the Thunder. Dane Swan look alike about him at the moment. He'd like that. They're both wearing magpie jumpers anyway. As play goes on for the Tiwi Bombers, finding a target on the outer side. And here they go again, heading in there from a direction, and he could get two goals in a couple of minutes in Tiwi. Could really put a nail in a coffin for the Palmerston Magpies 15 minutes into this third quarter. So 12-5-77 to 5-8-38. As we alluded to earlier in the call, Palmerston have had their chances in front of goal this quarter. So there'll be three goals in five minutes for the Tiwi Bombers. If Tip and Woody kicks this one, this will make number seven. Three for a behind. So he still sits on half a dozen. And it's 12 6, 78 to 5 8, 38. So Liston will kick in for the Palmerston Magpies. Goes straight up the guts. Palapamini. And also fighting it out there with Jancic. And here come Tiwi again. Could be the old seven point play coming up. Cantilla's there. Ooh, maybe in the back there for Bongetti. But away they go. Lovely looking kick from Mankara. Doesn't find uh, the target. And it's through for another behind. 12 7 79 to 5 8 38. And uh, well, we might get an eight point play the way this game's going. Little sidestep. Thank you very much for coming. And it's another behind. So they're really, really making the most of their opportunities, Tiwi, by putting the pressure on there and really sending some shivers down the Palmerston Magpies' spines at the moment. Liston, what will he do with this kick? Has to be precise with it. Oh, geez, it falls to the bottom again. Here comes Ephraim Tippenwoody. Again, if uh, Alyssa's going to go up the middle, like you say, it's got to be spot on. And even if the Tiwi Bombers are two or three metres off a player, it, it has to be spot on because their closing speed, and if you give the ball a little bit too much air or that just that kick's just not right, they close you down and they put you under pressure and lo and behold, they've created a turnover and Ephraim kicks his sixth? Yes. Sixth? No, seventh, actually. Seventh. So... Ephraim's obviously got the better of the force, but obviously he's getting more supply, but at the end of the day, you've got to really play to your own strengths and not to the Tiwi Bombers' strengths, and that's what Palmers seem to be doing at the moment. You also would think this is sort of the weather where you'd be going for your chest marks a little bit more often, just to make the most of your marking attempts instead of the, the old one hand or the two hand in front. I know we're taught that as youngsters, but when it's wet, slippery conditions, it's chest marks. That's the way to go. That's what I was taught anyway. Yeah, definitely. Chest marks, and it's back to basics football. Kicking the ball long and, f and hard and long and forward into your forward line and yeah, not over-finessing. Here they go again through Heenan. Good-looking lead out. There that time there by the likes of Cantilla. But Palmerston finally get their chance. And they go up along the wing. Dignan drops a mark. Good spoil. And it will be thrown in. So Tiwi taking full control of the game now. 13-7-85 to 5-8-38. 
Palmerston desperate for a goal here in this third quarter as it's tapped down. Good work there by Bradley Pelipamini. He loves a bounce and loves a running goal as well. Could this be an epic moment? It will be if Ephraim takes a one-handed and kicks a goal. Fantastic work there by Bradley Pelipamini and Ephraim Tibbamwoody. And it's just been sensational viewing over the last five or six minutes for the Tiwi Bombers. Yeah, the Tiwi Bombers, like, it, like we've said all night, they're pacing their skill and uh, they break lines with their pace and their foot speed, but if they combine that with a long kick and, and a long darting kick, it didn't hold up along in the air and give the Palmerston Magpies time to get back. And just it just plays into the hands of the forwards. The back one struggled to find and, and track the flight of the ball. And again, at the end of the day, it sort of fell into Ephraim's lap with a bit of a one-hander and finished off the good work. But yeah, it's uh, Palmerston going to find it really tough to even get close from here on in. As we all know in wet season, when it rains it pours and at the moment it's raining goals for the Tiwi Bombers. This is a high up and under kick heading in the Kavanaugh direction for the Palmerston Magpies. Nice little lace out kick by Suar and finds the target in Ewing. And this is their chance to get a, their first goal on the board. We've been going roughly at 20 odd minutes. It's been a long time between drinks for Palmerston to get a goal. Haven't scored one since the 22nd minute mark of the second quarter. So Darren Ewing for goal number five. And he puts it through. So Palmerston keep their hopes alive. Has it all been dashed? It's 91 playing a 44. Yeah, it's going to be a long road back here, but I tell you what, if, if, if Palmerston can get probably the next two or three goals to close out this quarter, and if, Anything can happen. Footy's a funny game. 91 plays 64, I should say. No, 44. Yep, holes right. And as the Wanderers clubs celebrate their win over there, we can hear them yelling and screaming. <laughs> I think it's ladies' night over there, Edo. Oh, gosh. Maybe what happens on ladies' night should stay on ladies' night over at the Wanderers football club. <laughs> There is plenty of noise out there, isn't there? Good musical interlude a little bit later on, probably, during a th three-quarter time break for these two sides as Tiwi in complete control. Quick kick out. Good work there by Tipalora. Off there to Cunningham. Cunningham, lovely long kick. Epram, can he put two hands on that one? Liston under pressure, overruns the ball. This is danger. It's over the boundary line. Young Liston in a bit of bother at the moment. Always a, a worry when you're a fullback and the ball is coming in that quickly into your back line. It's playing loose at the moment, which is interesting. As the ball is to be thrown in. Cloak doing the ruck work for Palmerston. Third man up there for Tiwi. Gets it out. Off the ground that time there by Jason Cloak, but it's going to go back from whence it came. It's a two-on-one situation. They've got two guarding Tip and Woody. Again, miscommunication there from Audio and Liston. One thought the other was going to go for it, and in the end it just fell out, and it, probably they could have rebounded there if they had one of them spoke and took the mark. So Cantilla doing the ruck work for Tiwi. He hits ground. He goes in the hard after it again. Also in that area there is uh, poor Jimmy. As the rain continues to fall here at TIO Stadium. It's just light at the moment, but just making conditions a little bit tough. Good pick up there by Palapa Mini. Trying to set up his Thunder teammate in uh, Nabi Kelly, but also Scanlon's there as well. Cunningham. Good work by Tiwi. Just to ease the pace off the ball. Went a little bit too lackadaisical there was Mungatopi. Seen over the boundary line. The ball to be thrown in. Cantilla giving away a lot of ground there to the likes of Cloak. Free kick has been paid. Advantage as well. Oh, bouncing. And it's through for a behind. A lucky on that one. Good pressure there by Little to force a little bit of defence on Tiwi as away they go again. Oh, no, an ill-directed kick. And here comes Munga Topi. He's got some support by Mankara. Bit of pressure. 
Hamlin's there as well. And they're just lining up for it now, the Bombers. And that was just so easily set up there for the likes of Heenan. The pass from Pora Timmy. And they just had so much space. Yeah, the Terry Bombers find space in the closest of clinches. Uh, and they, they always seem to do it quite easily and get out of trouble. And again, like we've said all night, if your kicks aren't spot on, they tear you to pieces and skill errors cost you. So Heenan goes through and kicks another one for the Tiwi Bombers. And that makes it 15-7, uh, 15-8, 98. So 6-8, 64. And this is the quarter where the Bombers have really shown up the Magpies. The defence has been under immense pressure this quarter by the forward structure of the Tiwi Bombers, the Magpies. And they're desperate for a centre clearance. So Cloak taps it down. And a free kick going the way of Little as he moves it forward. Needs a, a mark and he'll get it. And that's good work there by Pratt as he goes long, heading in the Ewing and Cloak direction. And a good mark taken there by Kavanagh. He swings around, snaps it, and uh, the umpire says, you've got to come back. The umpire, I think, called play on, but I think the barometer of the pumps inside, especially in the first half, was when Kavanagh was on fire and getting a lot of the ball up forward. And... Um, it probably provides another avenue to goal and, and instead of just relying on and Darren Ewing. Uh, and that's probably where the Tui Bombers have sort of really clamped down on Ewing and and uh, where Kavanagh couldn't really take up the slack. He sort of went missing midway through that third, midway through that second quarter and now into the third and this is sort of his first real impact on the game, so to speak. So Kavanagh from a tight position. Deep in the pocket, he breaks it out just a little bit, but he kicks it truly. And one they desperately needed, the Magpies. 7 8 50 uh, to uh, 15 8 98. And Palmerston get their second goal for the quarter. Well, Tiwi have dominated, and uh, they're lucky they're not further in front because the Bombers were. Terribly inaccurate at one stage, kicking three straight behinds before they got another goal. And Ken Kavanagh and the Ewing show really show up. But I guess the forwards can't do much if the ball isn't coming their way. Uh, and that's another thing where they really haven't been dominating the centre clearances as such over this quarter. Yeah, they've been really starved of supply tonight. And I suppose I'm a little bit hard on Kavanagh, but uh, in the same sense that the Palmerston midfield needs to get a little bit more production and get a little bit more down there so they can do their job. Because when it gets down there, they generally do it. So Little kicks it in a the direction there of Guy, who misjudged the ball, slipped off his hands, and here come the Tiwi Bombers along the wing. Using it well. Slow and deliberate build-up. Little punches it away. Had to work hard for it there was Corey Kelly. And he'll get a free kick for it as well. Little really does make you earn your kicks. As he plays on, and I don't know what's going on here. Another high tackle. They switch play. Kupanga Miri in the middle of the ground. He could go all the way if he wanted to, but he does the team thing and spots up his big full forward in Tip and Woody. And what's disappointing there was that uh, Nathan McLean in the midfield uh, in the first instance overcommitted to the contest. Let Rupert Papangamiri run on and, and do what he needs to do. But also, probably sacrosanct, there was five Palmerston blokes standing around letting, making Sammy Audio do all the work on Ephraim Tip and Woody. Someone needs to really stand in his way and, and take ownership over it, especially those older blokes like Liston and, and the likes down there. Sammy Audio is only a, a very young and raw individual and coming up against the experience of Tip and Woody, it's very hard for him to stop him, especially with a delivery like that. So Tip and Woody. This for number 10. So here from Tip and Woody, as I said earlier in the piece, he has a tendency of kicking big bags of goals, and he's doing it tonight as well. 
the delivery has been absolutely supreme to him. But you're right, though. And it does take a lot of courage to step in front of a, a leading full forward. But that's what they need to do. They need someone to put their body on the line. Their captain's trying to fly the flag in uh, a little bit of the niggle out there. But they need someone to uh, be courageous enough to just stand in that hole. And it is, it is detrimental. I know Sean Smith from Melbourne a couple of years ago did it in front of Tony Plugger Lockett. And my goodness gracious me, he didn't get up in a hurry. But it's what the team needs. And it's what the Magpies need as well. As three-quarter time happens, 16-8-104 to 7-8-50. It's the Tiwi Bombers in complete control of this Round 8 match here at TIO Stadium. We'll have a short break and we'll be back in a moment for the final quarter.
And welcome back for this final quarter of this round A clash between the Tiwi Bombers and uh, the Palmers, the Magpies. It's the road safety awareness round as players are wearing seatbelts to make people aware of road trauma out there on the roads. No matter how it happens, it can always affect someone. And uh, those uh, interested parties that uh, may have watched the quarter time huddles there, uh, the runner, the number two runner for the Tiwi Bombers is the one and only Austin Wanamiri, who has been delisted by Melbourne. He's still got a chance at the, the rookie and pre-season draft in a couple of weeks' time. But if not, uh, I am under the, the under the good impression that it'll be suiting up for the Terry Bombers later on this season and potentially for the NT Thunder next year, which oh, would be fantastic. Wanna wanna. Up close. Well, that's what we used to call them in the Melbourne Cheer Squad anyway. Wanna wanna. As Tiwi get another clearance. Epram stays down low, but winning the foot race out there is Dion Mankara. Swings around, snaps it around the corner. It was Ross Tungatal, and pardon me. But Palmerston clear the ball. It's a two-on-one situation. Could go back in there sooner rather than later. Great work there by the Magpies to close it up. But they lose a handle on the ball anyway. And just finding some space, as we always say, and playing on quickly are the Tiwi Bombers for another goal. Again, Palmerston just rushing the ball out of defence and not spotting up a target. I know it's hard with the rush of blood that you do get coming out of defence. You just want to clear your area. But in that same sense, it just puts, puts your, your back line under an intense, enormous pressure as soon as the ball's turned over again. And with Tiwi, their relentless pressure and their speed, their closing speed and their ability to get to the ball when it's on the ground is where they play their best football. It's, it's, uh, if you don't hit your targets, they definitely make you pay. So the goal scorer that time there was uh, Kuranua. As the ball was held up in the middle of the ground. Just finding space when they need to. And using the ball wisely as well. Palmerston under complete pressure at the moment as Pratt tries to get a clearance for the Magpies. Dives on top of the ball. It's going to be hard to get out. They tunnel ball it out, the Tiwi Bombers. Plenty of pressure now from both sides. Good work there by Guy to get a kick away. Heading in the Dignan direction. Has to be good with it. Cunningham's going to chase him down. Plenty of pressure on the ball at the moment from both sides. Still fighting hard. Dignan keeps it in play. And away go Palmerston. Oh, just being a little bit fancy with it, but it's worked their way. Dignan, lace out kick. Doesn't find the target. Could be 50. Would be in the big leagues. And Tiwi have a chance to settle things down. So the Bombers through Mungatopi. This is Sampson. Goes on to the outer side, finds Cunningham. It's worked up hard onto centre wing for his kick here. It's been lively up forward today, Jerry Cunningham. Finds the target and a good one in that in Corey Kelly. So he's in the middle of the ground. They play on quickly. Heenan has the ball. Can they link up? They tend to by hand. This time they do it by foot. It's a two-on-one situation. A diving mark in attempt that time there by Kuranua. And away go Palmerston. They have to be good with it. And they are through little. Have to be precise with the hands. Having really gone far with the ball. Losing a handle on it there was Smith. Geez, dangerous work here by Little. Can he get it out? He's gone backwards to go forwards. Under immense pressure out of the Palmerston defence, but they will use it wisely. And they find a target in Hamlin. Jeez, he's close to the boundary line. Good pressure there by the likes. I should say of Kuanua. And a scene over the boundary line. So poor Jimmy's there as well, and uh, he's been doing some handy work up forward. I tell you what, they run in packs, the Tiwi Bombers, and they're good at it. The Bongetti and also uh, Cameron Cloak doing the ruck work. Both ruckmen just misjudged the umpire's throw that time. Stewart's there. He's been very quiet today. He's usually in the thick of things. Smith diving over the ball for Palmerston. Gets the ball out. Good work there by Mankara. And Palapamini gets a quick kick away. Stewart under pressure in defence. Players diving, spilling all over the ball at the moment. Looking for the boundary line of Palmerston and they find the target. Blister not happy with it. He's still probably a little bit sore from stubbing his toe a little bit earlier on in the piece. 
Yeah, again, again, the Palmerston just rushed the blood. They probably could have hit up a target. They had two Palmerston blokes just outside the 50 there. So, again, the rush of blood. They could have eased up and just a little bit of voice and a little bit of calmness and, and hit a target. They could have moved the ball out of danger much more easier. And but now they find themselves under pressure again, just outside the 50 of the Terry Bombers. Kuranua over to Papunga Mary. What a fantastic work there by Tiwi. They finally got another clearance and they've dominated the clearances tonight. Whether it be in the middle of the ground or whether it be around the stoppages, they have really put their stamp on it. And they're just so slight of hand as well. And another score goes on the board and it's a damaging one at that. 17-9-111 to 7-8-50. Yeah, like you say, the Tiwi Bombers do make you pay especially on the turnovers and at the stoppages. So, again, you've got to be man on man. You've got to, you're with them one minute, you're, you're, away from, you're about five metres away from the next. And as soon as they create that separation, um, it's very hard to close them down just due to their, their speed and, and use of, use of uh, elite skills and precise skills that, that, that they do have. So 18-9, 117, a 7 8 50. So the ball makes its way back into... The stadium. Our first real dose of rain for season 2011-2012. Haven't really had too much wet weather over the journey of the last eight rounds. Uh, we expect, uh, well, with the Weather Bureau predicting uh, maybe, just maybe, a uh, cyclone before Christmas this year. They can always send uh, tingles down the old back of the spine. So here come uh, Palmerston through Pratt. Needs some support. Busting through the pack that time there was the likes of Smith. But through uh, Bora Jimmy. And now this time Jerry Cunningham. A long booming kick and on the last line of defence it is marked. And Palmerston will clear through audio. Just looking for targets. Desperately needing something. And Slazy on the marking attempt there. That time was Cloak. Cunningham's in the area. And here come the Bombers as they slowly but surely set things up into the middle of the ground. Heenan switches play. Papunga Mary. Mungatopi, Sampson. Back to Papunga Mary. Lost the handle on the ball and a free kick. Yeah, Pierce Little again, just a little bit over to Salas and just pushing Papunga Mary in the back. But just on that far wing, just before where Cameron Cloak had the opportunity to take the ball and then go, and go on with it, again, was just a far too relaxed. The Terry Bombers sweat on your mistakes. So if you make a mistake, they'll make you pay regardless. And Jason Cloak making a mistake but earning a free kick for his troubles there, dropping a chest mark. So slippery conditions playing havoc. And for the boys down south, I mean, they're, they're, they've got to get used to the humidity as well where... As the Tiwi Bombers are definitely used to uh, these trying conditions. Kelly trying to get it forward. Little had to be good with his hands. Was so. Going in hard. Kavanagh setting up. And here come Palmerston just overrunning the ball that time there was Kelly. And away go the Bombers through Heenan. Had to be precise. Still got plenty of time. Bradley Palapamini. Jerry Cunningham on the outer wing. He will get this. No he won't. Missing a chance there is Ross Tunga Talam. Darren Ewing occupying a lot of real estate by himself down the other end of the ground. Plenty of magpies around this one. Liston tries to get it out. Audio's there as well. And they'll slow things up through Pratt. They'll switch play. And they've got Mark magpies lining up for the ball on the outer side. Guy had to run a long way for this one. But does he have anyone to kick to? He plays on quickly. Kavanagh in the area. Nearly chipped off. High up and under kick, but there is no one there for Palmerston. Dropping a mark that he should have taken there was Heenan. Also there is the likes of McCasker. Now inside the forward 50. Cook, can he use the ball well? Looking for Ewing. Ewing trying to keep his feet. He does so. Gets a handball out. Little. Little hokey bokey kick. And there are plenty of magpies there to uh, mark that one. And they'll just go back and uh, take their time. The mark taken there by Sheldon Kelly. They did it the hard way, but they've got a chance to get a score on the board. 
Yeah, definitely doing it the hard way, Palmas, and they're finding it a really hard slog to really push it forward with any great precision and momentum. And, and, and again, that just a fortunate enough, the ball was kicked up and they had some numbers there at the drop of the ball. And we've spoken about it when they've had their chances, they've sprayed it. So 7-9, 51 to 18-9, 117. Just wait for the ball to come back in. Would be an expensive procedure, wouldn't it, if we had balls in the buckets at the end of uh, end of the goals? Yeah, they'd be floating. <laughs> they would be floating. <laughs> As the kick is headed in the direction of a big pack, which features Jerry Cunningham with those bright gold boots. But here comes Guy. He's got plenty of time. And he chips it across the Ewing. Jake Dignan in the goal square, but Diggs says, no, thanks, Ewing. You go and uh, slot this one through. So the old seven-point play this time for the Palmas the Magpies. Oh, he plays on quickly. He does give it off to his roommate, housemate, Jake Dignan. The Thunder Premiership teammates linking up here for the Palmas the Magpies this evening. So Jake Dignan, best and fairest winner for the NT Thunder this year, had an absolutely outstanding season. Can he put a goal on the board for the Palmerston the Magpies? Lovely looking kick, and that is how it's done. I'm trying to put a bit of respect on the scoreboard for Palmerston. Yeah, the Sting's obviously gone out of the game here now, and uh, yeah, it's uh, like you say, the housemates combined there, and it's really good to see both those guys sign back on board with the NT Thunder this year as they move forward. And um, yeah, obviously the likes of further players coming on board that that train, and it could be one of as we say, Waylon Manson, if he doesn't get picked up. But there's also touted as Manson may get picked up, but he might be allowed to play with the NT Thunder for a year as a development program sort of position. Like a twenty third player or something oh, like that. Something, something similar to that that was uh, was thrown up during the week. So, yeah, there's going to be some opportunities, especially for these younger blokes and the Tiwi guys as well, just to push for selection into that. Uh, Thunder squad if, if that's so if that's something they desire. Well it's exposure and also uh, what it is as well as stepping into a, a premiership team or a premiership squad as well. Bit of changes going on off the field as Jared Isla takes over the CEO position and also the new coach in uh, Daniel Archer as Ross Tungatala streams out of the middle of the ground. Good work there by the likes of uh, Corey Kelly to try and trap it and a fine mark well, nearly taken there by the likes of uh, the number 10, and that is Tip and Woody. And away go Palmerston. Here we go. Can we get a good build-up for the Palmerston Football Club? Had no one to kick to or hand pass to in the end. Going hard for it there is uh, Tip Laura. Ducked what he should have taken and was pinged for holding the ball. So here comes Palmerston in the Ewing direction. Uses his body well. Play on. Advantage. And a good goal taken there to Sheldon Kelly. Again, as we say, just getting some more uh, points on the board and just, just trying to make it a little bit more respectable. But yeah, As all backmen do on Darren Ewing, it's just rough and scrag him and trying to put, put him off his game. But again, if he's going to win free kicks for you, and whether it's him kicking the goals or whether it's your, your forward flankers and your, your crummers coming off him, you don't mind that as a coach. Um, especially if Buff Ewing is kicking his uh, usual five or six as well. Not big in stature, but a uh, very strong man indeed wearing the number five Guernsey tonight. So putting some respect on the scoreboard, but the game was killed off uh, in the third quarter. Some great work by the Tiwi Bombers as they look to get another clearance. Tunga Talam in the thick of the action. Quick kick away. And here comes Cunningham. Halifaminis in the area as well. Jeez, he did that well, Cunningham. Heading in the tip and woody direction, but uh, some gallant work there by the Palmerston defence to force that over the boundary line, and they live to fight another day. Yeah, Jason Cloak playing the old Magpies role that he used to play in, uh, that uh, spare man in defence and chopping that one off and just camping himself in front of Ephraim Tip and Woody to foray any uh, and foil any more forward thrusts by the Tiwi Bombers. So Wilson tries to tap it out but it goes to the ascendancy of the Tiwi Bombers. There were no Palmerston players at the bottom of that pack. 
And that was great work there by Bradley Palapamini. He's been so dangerous tonight coming out of defence. And he's worked his way up into the forward line nicely to uh, scoop up a chance for a wonderful goal. And uh, we'll get his name on the scorebook as well. 19-9-123 to 9-9-63. It's a 60-point lead to the Tiwi Bombers. Yeah, as we wait for the ball to be returned, uh, young Bradley's kicked that through through to the airport there, so we're just having to wait for the young fella to go and fetch the ball. Thank you very much. Got his kick for the night as well. Yep, everyone gets a touch, everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you can be following us on Facebook tonight. AFL NT. Check it out. Some great picks, of course of local footy at its best in the NTFL. And also you can have your say as well. Ask any question you like tonight from wherever you're watching right around the globe. Uh, blood, blood rule here marked uh, by the umpire to Dwayne Hamlin. Oh, geez, are you allowed to do that? Not go through the interchange? I don't think you are. Is that a penalty Is there, or they'll let it slide? Oh, I think they'll let it slide with the, the change of play. and uh, it's Basically, you're supposed to be allowed to run straight on, but you've got to still go through the interchange gates. The number 18 Ripley? in Ripley was just a little bit eager to get out there. Um, but, yeah, you, you're allowed to run on. You just, yeah, I think they'll let that one slide. Okay, we've got to do a Pontius pile and wash our hands of that situation. As here come Palmerston. Mankara gets a quick kick away. Audio switches play, finds Guy on the outer side. But yet again, doesn't have the players leading up into the spots. He has to go long, tries to find a target, and he does so through Sheldon Kelly. He plays on quickly. Here comes a good build-up by Palmerston. And slowly but surely, they've worked it into their forward line. Watch out for Ewing. This is what Palmerston needed to do in defence. Got players jumping in front of him. That was Mungatopi there. Sampson going in hard. Good, strong tackle. And holding the ball as well. Wowee. What a fantastic tackle that was there by Sheldon Kelly. And uh, I tell you what, they're going to be feeling all the bumps and bruises that time there on the number 15 in Barton. And Sheldon Kelly will line up for his second for the night. I really like Sheldon Kelly's game. He's really popped up in, in, in various places. He has been a little bit of the bright spark for the for the Palmerston Magpies, which um, unfortunately misses that one. But he has played a, a, a very handy game for Palmerston. It's just uh, there's been very little or no support around the, around the clinches for, for the likes of himself, uh, Buff Ewing uh, and Jakey Dignan in, in the middle. Um, and also uh, Cunningham, uh, Kavanaugh up forward as well. He's... he's and there's been a little bit, little or no support at all for the rest of those blokes as well. So a big looking mongrel punt. Straight up into the centre half back area and the, the Tiwi Bombers have done well to get rid of that one. As Kira Nua kicks it on to Mungatopi. Also there was a Bupangamiri. Mungatopi creates some space for Ross Tungatalam. He goes long and strong. Hits the ground and a great deflection into the aid of Jerry T Cunningham. And that is an epic team moment of the day. Great slips catch there. Oh. It's just, it was like he was sitting in the slips in the in the body line days when Donald Brabham was copping one around a throat height and <laughs> he's just cat-like reflexes, oh, like a David Boone at short leg. Wow, we've gone from the 30s in cricket to, uh, we've gone from the Invincibles to Booney. No, Booney. The Mo. Well, I'm thinking around Movember now. Okay. So, but yeah, again, the two Bombers can make something out of nothing and uh, they come down, they hit the ball with pace and, and, and speed and agility and they, they can just finish off some things that other people just can't do. He's trying to get a kick away there is Jason Cloak. Here come the Palmers, the Magpies. Long and strong to Darren Ewing. Just misjudged that one. Good work there by the likes of McLinden. Quick kick away there by McCasker. Kicked into space, really. No one trailing off. Heading out that way, Stevenson. Good work there by Palmerston to shake the tag off that one. Long penetrating kick yet again. Falling to Darren Ewing. 
He's got plenty of time and just dribbles it through for another goal. And Darren Ewing has number six for the night. Uh, yeah, Ewing just uh, took a gamble there with the wet weather. Sometimes the ball doesn't grip in that sort of situation and curl around like you want it to, but took a gamble and it paid off. And, yeah, he adds another one to his tally, and he's got six. Six, six for the night? Six for the night now. So, again, just a, another lazy day out for Darren Ewing. There's been a high-scoring quarter, this one. As we've just approached the 15-minute mark. And another blood rule for Palmerston. And this time the play comes through uh, the right channels. That was Pratt again with the blood rule. Just reopening an old wound. And Zwire comes on to the ground. Well, number 17 a couple of weeks ago, but as we've been alluded to tonight, they're wearing different jumpers with seatbelts on them, representing road safety round. And these two clubs are featuring heavily in the awareness of that. Mankara gets a quick kick away. The two number ones in Stewart and also Mungatopi. But this is going to be a nice little goal for the number 11. No, it won't. It'll be a behind uh, going to the likes of poor Timmy. Go Jimmy. As the ball will be kicked in by Liston. So Sting out of the game. It's a heavily strapped Tipalora heads down to the back line. Mungatopi, Sampson, he's been in the thick of it tonight. That's definitely not 15. Ross Tungatalam finds a target inside the forward 50, and that's Bradley Palapamini, and he's definitely within range, old Bradley. As players start streaming into the goal square. Ephraim's been unmarked, oh. and just as easy as you like. <laughs> and I think Palmerston thought that Bradley would uh, go back and kick it as well, but... Jeez, that's just lazy defence. It's just lapses in concentration, Edo. It's unforgivable, especially at this level of football. Uh, and RJ would be uh, filthy with that. Yes, the game's out of reach now, but you don't don't go away and throw away th little things like that. It uh, you can still keep your structures and work on things in this final 10 minutes without um, letting things like that slip and letting your concentration slip. So another one on the board there for Ephraim as well. That's 11 for the night. And it goes to 20, 19, 129 to 10, 10, 70. And the Tiwi Bombers are going to be marching on into the night and really stating a claim as a major challenger for this year's Premiership as it's starting to really open up with those sides just below Nycliffe. And they'll be taking on Darwin tomorrow. So a likely win for them as well as they're taking on the bottom place side. But Tiwi and St Mary's have had important wins over the last couple of weeks. They're just starting to awake from their slumber. As uh, not happy with the call there it was uh, the number eight in Stevenson saying that he was being held. Tap down. Going in hard yet again, but Tiwi get another open chance into the forward line. Mungatopi and Stewart. Great tackle by Stewart. He's going to have to work hard again on Cunningham. Mungatopi, Sampson. Working hard on the outside of the boot, trying to find a target. Bowls everyone over. Tell you what, we've got five injuries in the test side. He might get a gig. Great tackle again. Tiwi under pressure from Palmerston. This is what they needed to do for four quarters, Palmerston. They didn't need to do that, though. It's out of bounds on the full. Off hands, in fact, and it will be throw in. Very lucky there, Palmerston to get away with that one. Tap down. Palmerston, little worm burning kick, trying to kick for just some space as Hunter sees it over the boundary line. Company there by Heenan. So there wouldn't be long to go in this one. Have been plenty of goals as we're into red time. Wilson doing the ruck work. But nothing but a solid hit there by Papanga Miri. 
inside the forward 50, Rostunga Talam in the area. Great work by Palmerston to clear it. Finds Hunter. Dignan's there as well. Chips it across. Dignan ends up with it on centre wing. Marking him is Heenan. Oh, geez, a sloppy kick by Diggs. But gets some good tackle there. Little doesn't know any other way to go in hard. Geez, just loves the contested ball there in uh, Pierce Little. Yeah, really good hard contested footy there. Uh, Dom Tipalura there. Uh, and also uh, 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 Rowan Smith coming out of the back line, just running straight at the ball and hitting it with pace. Scanlon to Bupunga Mary, linking up there with Mungatopi. Has a couple of bounces, Old Donald. Looks for his mate and his partner in crime. And this for a dozen, doesn't get paid the mark. That was Tip and Woody. And Palmerson lucky to get away with that one. Cameron Cloak going to be under pressure here by Mungatopi. I should say that was... Uh, the likes of Tipora Mantamiri. Mungatopi. And Jerry Cunningham finishes it off with a handy goal. And they've just had goal scorers all over the park tonight. And it's hard to say if it's coming from the midfield or the forward line, but it's just coming from every which direction. And Palmerston, whether they're not up to uh, the pace of the game, or just their skill levels letting them down uh, really tells the story of the night. And another blowout in the NTFL. And the Tiwi Bombers securing themselves a spot in the top five. So 22-10, 1-4-2 to 10-10-70. Ball back in the middle of the ground. The mozzies are really starting to attack old Bradley and myself. Wet season, gotta love it. <laughs> Another centre clearance coming the way of the Tiwi Bombers. Geez, holding the ball definitely on that one as Palmerston get the advantage through Jake Dignan. He's at the 50. Doesn't hit the target, might get the ball back. Misjudged it. Mungatopi, Donald, trying to clear the ball. Also there was uh, Tip and Woody. That was Albert. But a free kick given to Guy. It's a Guy. Oh. Chipped off there by Scanlon. Bongetti. Going backwards to go forwards here, Tiwi. They lose a handle on the ball. Off the ground. Will it be advantage paid? Yes, it is. And, uh, well, he's happy with the way that things have gone for himself tonight. He's kicked three goals, Sheldon Kelly. And uh, just an opportunity... Opportunistic one there for Palmerston. 12-10. Plays 22-10. Yeah, as, the, as the game comes to it, winds to a close, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how Palmerston can bounce back from this. And uh, As we sort of alluded to at the start of the broadcast, it, this is their season on the line tonight, uh, as, as were the Wanderers earlier on today who managed to win over Waratah but if, if Palmerston uh, have got any chance of making the finals they really need to uh, win, string some wins together towards, uh, towards Christmas otherwise they're leaving their run a little bit too late. Well the gap on the top five uh, and the bottom three is really starting to open up and it's only round eight as a kick away that time there from Jancic. Ripley's down there as well also trying to move it Along centre wing, but it's just chipped off yet again by the Tiwi Bombers. A lovely kick that time there by Corey Kelly. Playing on quickly is Papanga Mary. Finds Cunningham. He's still got plenty of space to play with it. What will he do with the ball? He swings it across his body. Having to work hard for that one there was Barden. Can he get in on the action? It stacks on the mill. Kick away, and it's through for a behind. And they just want to keep it moving. They always just try and get it out. They don't hold play up. They just keep on keeping on. As Dignan clears it, finds the target there in McLean. McLean looks up forward. It's three on three football. Tapped on forward. Darren Ewing traps the ball, uses his girth and strength there to just with a second effort. It's fantastic stuff there. Off to Kavanagh. Needs a handy bounce. 
And it's through for a behind, but, geez, that's inspirational stuff there by Darren Ewing. Yeah, even when the game's gone, he, he's still putting in the hard yards, tackling, shepherding, um, all those little one percenters that uh, Palmerston probably lacked uh, overall tonight. Is, and, uh, yeah, I suppose Ewing just sort of leading by example from his Thunder days that which some of the younger crew from Palmerston could take a, take a leaf out. So the ball goes long. Good work there by Hamlin. To get it forward, he goes in hard again. Keeps his feet. Off to Cook. Needs to be good. It's through for a behind. More errant kicking. Costing Palmerston again tonight. So not long to go as we approach the 30th minute mark of this quarter. A lot of goals kicked. And a big booming torpedo out of defence. Going up high there was Corey Kelly. Mankara keeps tapping it forward. Papanga Mary's there as well. Some handy foot shuffling work there by the Tiwi Bombers as Mungatopi. Works hard to keep the ball alive. Tries to keep his feet. Also there was Heenan. But here come Palmerston. Through Smith. Jason Cloak. He's going to go for a run with it. Touches the ball on the ground. And that is game over. 22-11, 143. The Tiwi Bombers have knocked off the Palmerston Magpies. 11-12-78. Other winners today were the Wanderers over the Waratahs. And also a big victory for St Mary's over the Southern District's Crocs. Big game tomorrow between Nycliffe and Darwin at Nycliffe Oval. Should be an absolute rip snorter of a game there. And we've got some massive games coming up for round nine as we approach Christmas here in the NTFL. The game that we're going to be endeavouring to cover next week is Nycliffe versus the Southern Districts. That is at 2.30 and that should be an absolute